Squash and stretch. Not to be confused as squash or stretch. One cannot exist without the other. Though there is no definitively numbered order of importance, squash and stretch is the first principle listed in Frank and Ollie's book, The Illusion of Life, Disney Animation. They consider squash and stretch to be the most important principle from a discovery standpoint, and arguably it is. Squash and stretch is how an animator creates the illusion of weight, elasticity, fluidity, and exaggeration. Though we call it an illusion, squash and stretch does exist in our everyday lives. All living things, and even some non-living things, experience squash and stretch. If something has a bone and muscle structure, it's going to have the necessary flexibility needed for squash and stretch. When it comes to non-living objects, the things that won't squash and stretch are rigid shapes. Things like wood, glass, and plastic. If an organic creature doesn't have at least a small amount of squash and stretch, it will make them feel like rigid plastic, a lifeless object. When we talk about squash and stretch as an animation principle, we aren't actually talking about its existence. Instead, we're referring to the act of exaggerating the squishiness of real life. The same as when drawing a caricature, an animator is responsible for exaggerating the definable features of real life while minimizing the unimportant details to make the actors on screen as relatable as possible, allowing the viewer to empathize with what they're watching. If anything in an animation feels unnatural, it will distract the viewer and pull them out of the experience. The more flexibility a character has in their body's form, the more a character can open up for expressive and relatable gestures. Animation is not the art of drawings that move, but the art of movements that are drawn. The most basic example of squash and stretch is the bouncing ball. This is why every animation course requires students to animate one. The simplicity of the shape gives the animator a clear view of the deformation, while also not overwhelming them with multiple deformable shapes like a character would have. Squash refers to the squishing or pushing down of the object's mass. The stretch is when you elongate it. They need to be treated like a spring, acting and reacting to each other. Squash can be used to emphasize an antic, stretch to exaggerate a drag, squash to follow through, and stretch to settle. We can see the same formula in real life actions too. We can clearly see some compression and extension in a jump. And even in a run. The most important thing to take away from watching live action footage is that even though our bodies are deforming for these actions, we always retain the same mass or volume. If we animated these actions to exaggerate the stretch, but didn't compensate the mass to get thinner as it stretches, the body itself would be expanding, gaining mass. If we squash the ball down, we have to compensate the loss of mass by expanding out the sides. If we stretch the ball out and make it super long, we have to compensate by shrinking the sides. As unrealistic as this exaggerated squash and stretch might feel, the simple fact that it retains its original mass makes it believable. And if it isn't believable, well, that's a distraction. Frank and Ollie compared this principle to a half-filled flour sack. You can push it to its flattest shape and pull it to its longest. It's important to know when to apply squash and stretch and when to refrain. You wouldn't want all of your animation to be the same loosey-goosey flow. We need to consider the texture. Texture in both timing and animation style. This is something that needs to be developed over time, because just like all other principles, there's no set rules. Squash and stretch is more of a feeling than a formula. It helps us portray our movement's arcs to the viewer as well. Most rules are designed to be broken strategically, but one you should avoid breaking is squash and stretch always have to follow the action's arc. Whether dragging behind to where the object used to be, or stretching ahead to lead the action. If you want to get fancy and are tempted to break away from the arc, you have the option to instead give your squash and stretch a secondary arc. Mind you, the main arc will still need some squash and stretch to maintain believability. But that doesn't mean we can't also give our animation a secondary squash and stretch arc to complement the main action so long as it isn't a distraction. Squash and stretch also helps us emphasize the contrast between our poses. 
Even the smallest weight shift could be turned into a grandiose action with the help of a little emphasis. Your character and animation style permitting, of course. When it comes down to it, squash and stretch is everywhere. We see it in our busy day-to-day -day lives and in the media we wind down with at the end of the day. It's so ingrained in the back of our minds that unless someone pointed out its existence, there's a good chance we still wouldn't have a firm grasp on it to this day. But thanks to Frank and Ollie and the rest of Disney's old men, we have the opportunity to unlock its true potential. A person should set his goals as early as he can and devote all his energy and talent to getting there. With enough effort, he may achieve it or he may find something that is even more rewarding. But in the end, no matter the outcome, he will know he has been alive.